Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today, we're gonna go over several different questions from viewers that were submitted to me recently. Some really good ones, and I know that they're not the only ones going through it. I've gone through most of this stuff myself at one point or the other, and I know a lot of you have too. There's a lot of business owners out there, and you don't have to own a business to, to go through this kind of thing either. You can you can view it as a, from the customer side. You can work for a company that has to deal with this kind of thing. Everyone's at a different stage in life, so if we can pass on the knowledge that we know and help shorten those learning curves, well, we should do that. Okay, so question number one today is, what do you do when a customer stiffs you? And so let's paint the picture for you a little bit in this scenario. And so this is actually another, I think a West Michigan uh, viewer of mine, and he has a lawn mowing service, maybe among other things, uses his 1025R to handle all sorts of, of tasks with that for uh, maybe a side hustle, maybe it's his full-time job, I'm not sure. Regardless, in his area, there was a customer who was about to be fined by the city. They were getting the, the warning that you better mow your grass, it's way too long, get it under control, or we're gonna ticket you. And so they hired this viewer to get the job done, and he used his tractor and his mower to clean up the yard, did a great job, sent over a few pictures. I think he said he hauled away over 60 bushels of clippings. So this is just on a small little city lot, so it's you can paint a picture of how out of control this was, how nasty it was. And while the person that hired him was not home when he was done, he did ask, it was a, a mother-in-law or a mother, something like that, to make sure that it was looked good enough and she agreed everything looked good and so he took off and invoiced him sent an invoice in the mail requesting payment well i think you know where i'm going with this it's been weeks and weeks notification after notification invoice after invoice stopping by calling text him whatever you can do and guess what he still hasn't been paid now this job was around 100 or 110 dollars so he asked, is it worth getting an attorney, you know, seeking legal action, legal recourse? And in my opinion, it's not, right? So hopefully you're staying busy with all sorts of other jobs that you have going on, other work that you have to do. But I think the amount of time that you're gonna lose trying to recoup that $110 when you could be out there making actual money from paying clients is just not gonna be worth it. You don't wanna put yourself further in the hole. At some point, you just have to cut your losses. But with everything we do, there's a lesson to be learned and I'm not sure I know the lesson, right? I haven't dwelled on it long enough to maybe have the right solution for him, but I think that it shows that there's a value in having repeat clientele and that there's a higher risk and perhaps a higher reward for doing these one-off clients, but there's probably a reason why his lawn was out of control to begin with. I mean, typically he doesn't have it going on. It's not all together with a customer like that. And so that's a higher risk. That's a warning flag right there. And maybe you can get, maybe not paid up front, but maybe half down up front at least to cover your costs. So if something like this does happen, you're not out entirely. Maybe you're not getting your profit that you hope you get, but you're at least covering your fuel, your time, your wear and tear, uh, you know, your trip from your house out there, all that kind of stuff too. So you know what, treat it more like not a very expensive lesson, right? You can, you can suck that up, you can move on and recover, but you can learn from it. So digest it, figure out how to do better the next time and protect yourself. Maybe you decide you don't wanna do that type of business anymore because it is too risky. Or if you have somebody that really wants you to do it, you're charging a higher premium because you know what could happen. You don't have to worry about that with repeat clients. It's a different scenario. With those recurring customers, you're on more of a regular cadence where you're just billing them weekly or monthly or quarterly, whatever it is, and you don't have to worry about that so much compared to these one-off situations. Now, it depends how vengeful you are, right? So I'm just, I'm kind of the guy that, that says, you know what, it, whatever he's got coming, he's gonna have coming. But, you know, I, I did have, well, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I had an idea, well, if you still have those 60 bushels of clippings and you really wanted to make a point, Maybe you haul those back over to his front yard, dump them out there, say, hey, I can haul these back away from you when you pay me to do the original job and then pay me to haul these back out. Otherwise, they're yours. Folks, we are proud to announce a brand new channel sponsor, RimGuard or RimGuardSolutions.com. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost-effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader, it gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground, and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be 
safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to RimGuardSolutions.com to find a dealer near you. All right, so question number two that I received, and that is, what do you do with your tractor business in the off season? How do you keep income coming in if you're not doing any tractor services for your customers? Now, I didn't have a whole lot of detail that really came in on this uh, question here, but I presume that he's in a more northern climate where there is an off season. Down south, you're you're probably more apt to stay busy, if not the whole year, the majority of the year. But up north where it snows and it blows and everything else is covered in snow all winter long, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to mow and to till and to do tree work and everything else. So the obvious is that you can do snow removal, right? And so that means you need to have, I think for a small tractor type of business, the perfect scenario with a a lot of clients close together. You don't want to trailer your tractor to all these different clients. So um, if you watch uh, Nick Boner, his snow blowing channel, he's got these huge, amazing four and five series John Deere tractors, inverted blowers on there, but he concentrates in certain areas. So if you can do that and you can set it up so you can drive to a big residential area and knock out a whole bunch of clients, that's a great way to do it, a great concept, a great setup. But I have a feeling for a lot of you, that's just not the ideal setup, or maybe you don't wanna get into snow removal. So what else can you do? Well, number one, you saw it coming, right? So you know that this is coming, and maybe it's your first year, maybe it's your fifth or your 20th year, right? So you figure out a game plan, maybe it's just, you know, level loading your income, right? So it's broken out even uh, year round. So even if the income's not coming in the winter time, you still know how to budget accordingly. And that sounds pretty simple, right? So another thing you can do is if you have recurring plans with your customers, if you have bundle services, and we talked about this previously too, but if you can bundle services together or have a regular maintenance cycle, even if that only lasts for six months out of the year for them, for that certain customer, maybe they can spread their payments out over a year. It's gonna make it seem cheaper for them. It's going to maybe give you less money coming in in the summertime, but it's gonna keep it coming year round. And you can probably get away with charging a little bit higher rate that way as well if they wanna split it up into smaller payments, but you know you have more income coming in, even in the dead of winter, for work you did last summer. And kind of tying into that as well is you can try to have customers, you can market it, prepaying for the next season, right? And so that's gonna allow you to plan better for the upcoming season if you need to hire more or less seasonal employees, if you have to get new additional equipment to tackle different kinds of projects or just more of the same projects. You know, it gives you a better insight into how your business is gonna operate and how it's gonna flow and how it's gonna grow. And now this last one may not apply to a lot of you, but maybe it does, or maybe there's an opportunity to consider and plan and, and get into that area as well. But if you're, the kind of guy that's doing all your own maintenance and you're working on your equipment all winter long, perhaps there's a way to develop or get into a small engine or a small equipment repair service so that in the off season, you can stay busy with a different kind of work. It's indoors, right? It's out of the elements. If you have a shop or the space, depending on the size of your business, I'm sure there's some requirements that you need to look into for your specific area and you wanna make sure you're doing it professionally and everything else. But if you went to school for that or you have years of experience doing it on your own equipment and you're just trying to figure out how can I stay busy, well, probably a lot of the customers that you already have still have equipment, right, that they want maintained in the off season. They're gonna know other people too, so you can do referrals that way to just kind of broaden that horizon. And I would imagine you could do a pretty good job staying busy throughout those slow winter months while you're waiting for spring. All right, now question three, this is from a young fella. He's gonna be a freshman at Texas A&M this fall. I'm gonna go ahead and read his email to you. So he says, hey, Courtney, I'm a big fan of the channel and love your how to run a business kind of videos. I'll be a freshman business student next year at Texas A&M. And while I'm excited to study entrepreneurship, it seems the best way to learn business is to run one. I agree with that. I've always done property maintenance growing up, both rural and suburban, so I have some experience running a tractor, a mower, etc. but I won't have access to any equipment while in college. So here's my question. How can I leverage my experience to run a business the next few years in college? I am blessed to have my tuition expenses paid for, so now is a good chance to take some risks and learn a little. All right, so there's a lot of ways to take an email like this, right? And so I went to college. Um, my first successful business, I started while I was in college, and. I, I like learning by doing, right? And so while you can be taught certain things, and I think college is very important for certain fields and industries, for me, I learned best by doing and failing. And those lessons stuck, 
and very few have I had to learn twice. And so the kind of advice I give somebody is based on my own experience with, with going through college, with starting many, many businesses, which most have failed for one reason or another. I've lost interest or didn't make enough money or whatever the reason might be. So I'll read you what I responded to him with, but you know, I, I didn't give him everything that we could possibly do, right? So something else that potentially he has the ability to do since, since tuition's paid for, he doesn't have a lot of other bills, hopefully right now. If he does have a little bit of cash and he knows equipment, perhaps he could get into flipping it, right? Or maybe he could find something else that he's passionate about and kind of start flipping that, right? So that's, a, that's something that I used to do, something I had a lot of fun doing. And it doesn't have to be zero turns and tractors. It could be just something small that you, that you have fun. I mean, that's not the only thing. You don't have to only like one thing. You can like a lot of stuff. So that could still kind of help keep that passion fueled and, and moving forward and try to turn that into maybe, you know, sort of a hobby part-time business there and figure out how to market it and what kind of costs you have. And if you have to end up getting insurance and paying taxes and all the other kinds of things that go along with it, it could be something that's kind of fun to do, pass the time, no doubt, and probably sure beats working at Walmart. So I'm gonna tell you what I told him here and let's see if you guys can help him out and give your own perspective on it too. All right, so I said, thanks for reaching out and following along. I agree, running a business, trying and failing and repeating worked well for me. If you won't have access to equipment, then perhaps there's something else you're passionate about that you can try out as a, a quote unquote startup. The skills you'll learn will apply to any venture you pursue later on. However, if your plan is to go into business for yourself, perhaps in the property management and maintenance area, then you could also start to build out your foundation with a high quality website, a blog, video content, start networking, build relationships with opportunities for repeat business. I've learned from every business I've started. Many have failed because of bad choices, planning, not making enough profit or losing interest. However, it's led me to where I am today and these lessons tend to stick around and are some of the most important to remember. And so again, it goes back to the cell phone business that I started in college and that business ended in, in misery. And, and a big part, portion of that was I was not insured for a very small window of time, still operating out of my parents' house while I was already closed on my new house but hadn't moved in. When I would get insurance, there was a house fire at my parents' house where my business was at. And all of my cell phone inventory went up in flames. And the regular homeowner's policy only covered I think $1,500 for a, a computer and didn't cover any of the inventory. So I was in a really bad spot. I just bought a brand new house. I bought a brand new truck. My cash was really tight at that point being young. I had no insurance. My inventory was gone and I had all these bills to pay. So it was a very dangerous situation. It didn't end well. Uh, shortly after that, the great recession came as well. It was just a perfect storm and uh, something I wanna make sure never happens to me again or anybody else. It was just an awful situation and I dug my way out of it and, and came back out and I think I'm on top right now, but I wanna make sure I stay there. Not that you're not gonna have good times and bad times, but that you can put things in perspective. And if you're doing your job of planning ahead, planning for the worst, right? Hoping for the best, planning for the worst, you're gonna be okay. Alrighty folks, well that's gonna wrap it up today. Now it's one of those kind of videos we sprinkle in now and then. I have a lot of fun talking about it, but we do sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. I'm sitting on a tractor right now. If you need something for your front end loader, your three point hitch, more likely we have it. So go to goodworkstractors.com. We'd love to earn your business. Check out what we have to offer. And if you enjoy tractor videos, all sorts of stuff about tractors, tractors at work, tractor overviews, tractor business stuff, Hit that subscribe button right down below, completely free, no obligation. We'd love to have you tag along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.